Okay, I thought this would be a nice little interesting study to do out of the Bible. There's a recent uh, news and coming attractions to the media is about pollution. I mean, the straws are killing everybody. The plastic bags are going to make the oceans a, a, a death trap. And yet, if I remember correctly, when I lived through going through the to the paper bag to the plastic bag transition. I, I, think I was a cashier at the time the plastic bag came in. And the plastic bags came in because paper bags were killing trees. So plastic bags will save the forest. I haven't heard that come up. As the stores go back to paper bags and now charging you for bags. And rest assured that these these cloth plastic bags they have to substitute today, they will be your next environmental hazard. So, as another upcoming event, as you turn to Exodus 20, verse 25, is we just had uh, Hurricane Dorian come through. Well, he didn't come through. God bless the Hurricane Dorian. Ravaged the Carolinas. But everybody ran out to get their plastic water bottles. Wrapped in plastic. You know, nuclear was that good, clean fuel that that will save the environment too. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Stop trying to save the whales, the manatees, the dogs, and everybody. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Animals don't go to heaven, my friend. But that's another study. Exodus 20, after I just made you angry. Verse 25, pollution. First time polluted shows up in the Bible. And that will make me an altar of stone. Talking to the Jews. Talking to the Hebrews. That have just become a nation. After God has taken them out. Of the iron furnace of bondage. I mean, you don't learn about that in schools, about the Africans making the Hebrews slaves with affliction. A lot of things the public school system doesn't teach. But that will make me an altar of stone. Thou shalt not build it of hewed stone. That means stone that has been cut, stone that has been blasted. Stone that has been worked, it's been shaped, it's been cut. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou has thou has littered it with straws and plastic bags. It don't say that. For thou shalt lift a tool upon it, thou has polluted. Well, there's the first time polluted shows up. And polluted is when you're going to build an altar for God, which we don't do today. But for the Old Testament, for the Jew, if he would take a hammer, a saw, a chisel to that stone that would be an altar made for God, polluted. Polluted. And it had nothing to do with oceans, it had nothing to do with the forests, it had nothing to do... But your relationship with God. I mean, if you take a stone and a chisel and a saw, you might make a carved image and call it a uh, aid to worship. And remove the second commandment and break the ten into two so you would have your carved image. And if you got your carved image, you have polluted your relationship between God and you. Numbers, 1832. Numbers, 1832. Now, we're not going to do them all. 
we're going to do the most important. But you can get yourself a concordance and look up all the pollution. The Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God. The workman that needs not to be changed, but write these fine words. I'll give, I give you some studying to do. Uh, Numbers 18.32 And ye shall bear no sin by reason of it, when ye have heaved from it the best of it. <coughs> Neither shall ye pollute Blue, that's the first time that word so the holy things of the children of Israel, least ye die. So the first time polluted shows up, you don't make a huge stone of worship. You take a, a rough stone for worship. Pollute shows up in the first time in the Bible as again relationship to God. So when you take the word pollution. And apply it to Mother Earth. You have polluted yourself with the Heavenly Holy Father God. Because the first times it shows up is in relationship with God. And God said, don't do this unless you pollute it. There is no Mother Earth. And there is a Mother Earth. You're doing real nice by stepping all over her. And peeing on her. And pooping on her. And driving on her. Is that a way to treat your mother? God says that Mother Earth, your God, is, is going to melt with fervent heat. Revelation 20. Peter speaks about it. We're going to get a new heavens, new earth. The earth you're trying to save today, the earth that being polluted, is going to burn up in an incinerator. And God's going to do it fresh, do it anew. The earth today is under the curse of man rejecting what God told him, told him not to do. Genesis 2, Genesis 3. And if you have a worship that has been spoiled by your hands, God says that's a pollution. Yes, plastic bags are doing harm to the environment. But you can save the whales from, from plastic bags and you can die and go to hell. And you'll burn in hell for all eternity and the whales just go back to the ground where they were made. And they'll never thank you in eternity. Thank you for saving me. You didn't save me, I just died. And your soul will be in torment for hell forever, then to the lake of fire for all eternity. See, devil's got you off from yourself to something else. Listen, Jesus Christ suffered and died for man. And the pollution of the Bible is when we have followed the worship of God the Father. Numbers 35, 33. We're taking the word pollution and running it through the King James Bible. And your media, your Facebook and all that is not going to do what, what, what I'm doing today. 35-33 So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are. That's Israel. The land that God's given it. For blood it defiles the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. All right, what's the pollution here? Murder. Yeah, that's killing somebody. It's not right. But the Bible, in the law for the Jewish people and for the nations, Romans chapter 13, is the person that murdered somebody, you are to shed their blood. And the pollution of America is not plastic bag, it's not plastic straws. The pollution of America is there are people on death row who have murdered other people and they're living and they're going to die on death row, possibly of natural causes. Very few will be put to death by capital punishment. 
That is a pollution in the Bible. Now, the context of Numbers chapter 35 is the land of Israel herself. But Romans chapter 13 speaks about execution of the government and those who are going against the government. And the fact is, those people say, save the whale, uh, you know, uh, spare the lives of the man in jail. Well, God says, okay, keep, keep the murderer alive, but... That blood is pollution. And since the time of Abel and Cain, when there was no law, Cain's, I mean, Abel's blood spilled out to God saying, Vengeance! My brother killed me. And when Noah got out of the ark, God said, Listen, every animal and every man that sheds blood will be held accountable. That death by murder is a pollution of the land. That's a pollution there. Second Kings twenty three sixteen. So when we come to the point, and I honestly, when we come to the point in the Bible that plastic bags are a serious threat, we'll stop and we'll spend all the time we can with that. Twenty three sixteen. And when we find out that straws are killing everybody in the Bible, we'll stop and give that a full study. Now, you can't find plastic in the Bible. But you can find straw. You can find bags. See what the God, let's see what God and Holy Spirit has to say about pollution. 2 Kings 23, 16. And Josiah turned himself and he spied the sepulchers where people are buried that were there in the mount <coughs> excuse me I would use in the mount find out where I was again lost my place and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers and burned them upon the altar uh oh and polluted it according to the word of the Lord which man of God proclaimed who pro proclaimed these words. Now, what did Josiah do? He's a king that's doing right for God. He's getting rid of the idolatry. He's getting rid of the religion. He's getting rid of the gods. And he's getting rid of the priests of the gods. And he's getting rid of the worships of God. So here are places worshipped by gods. By man. Not Jehovah God in the Bible, but God. And he is polluting their church. Notice my hands are going church. Is you know, quote, quote, unquote. He is disforming their religious service. By taking the bones of the prophets of the gods. And burning them bones to ashes. And sprinkling those ashes over the altars and over the worship center. Of the fallen gods. That's how he's polluting them. But he's polluting them to the honor and glory of God of the Bible. God of the Jews. He's making mockery of false worship. And the worship of God. I advise you to read chapter 23. Right? Read all your Bible. So here's a pollution of false worship that is good. Now we can't do that in America today because you know we got the Constitution protecting religions. But we turn around and expect God to give us a great revival when we allow the worship of God because we have that freedom. And you can't have a double standard. That's just, there it is right there. There's a pollution there. He's defiling the worshippers of God to serve the God of heaven and earth. So, Second Chronicles 36. 
I mean, are you saying that we should go destroy churches? Absolutely not. But I don't think we should give them the power. The, the Church of Jesus Christ doesn't need a constitution. It's been surviving long before America ever was, and before there was ever a constitution. And the Church of Jesus Christ is going to outlive any constitution. And the church of Jesus Christ will go off into eternity. And the worship of gods will go off in the lake of fire that burns forever. God will win. So 2 Chronicles 36, 14. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgress very much, so like America, after all the abominations of the heathen, Gentiles, and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. What's this pollution? There are idolatry, there are idols, there are images, there are gods, there are fallen priests, there are everything of the heathen being practiced in the temple in Jerusalem. And Second Chronicles is the fall of Jerusalem, the fall of the temple by the Babylonians, because everything and everything was in that temple but God and Jehovah of the worship of the Jews. So again, pollution is the worship of anything but God. You don't defile his, his altar. You don't carve his altar. You serve God and only God. And when you've read the final chapters of Chronicle and read Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah says the queen of heaven and her cakes. Jeremiah says when you take the tree out of the woods, it's a practice of the heathen, and you deck the halls with the tree. That is pollution. And not pollution, you taking the tree out of the forest. Oh, oh, oh. shave the trees. No, you brought in a heathen custom into what is supposed to be the worship of Jehovah God. The pollution in the churches today, they have the very same Christmas trees in the churches. They have taken that of the heathen practices and brought it into the churches. They brought the heathen drums into the churches. They got the heathen ways of practicing Jesus Christ, another Jesus. That's a pollution. You are not serving the God of the Bible correctly. And I have not mentioned oil spills. And I have not mentioned carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide. I have been talking about the worship of God the Father. When you go against it, that's a pollution. Ezra 2.62 Ezra 262. You're not going to get this out of a praise worship service. These sought their registry among those that were wrecked by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore were they as polluted from the priesthood. What's this? Here are men in the camp of Israel They've come out of Babylon, they're back in the land, the temple is, is, is going to be built. There are men to say, we are priests. Holy, holy, full of baloney, wear my tag on backwards, call me father. There are men that said they were priests, and when the Jews checked the genealogy of the Jewish people, and of the tribe of Levi, and of the tribe of Aaron, their names and family were not listed. So the pollution of the family is they were not of the proper family to be of the priesthood of the Jewish people. They needed guidance. They needed more help. They needed the records. 
And then if the records were to be there and they were the family, as of yet right now, they're polluted. They cannot enter into the priesthood. So according to Ezra, not everybody's welcome into the priesthood. Isn't that interesting? Check your church signs today. So that's Ezra. Psalms 106. Psalms 106. Psalms 106, 38. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters. Oh, 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 oh. you mean today what they call abortion. This is post-abortion. They were killing their children after birth. And their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Cana, and the land was polluted with blood. Okay, we've already looked at the land being polluted with blood because murderers were not put, being, being put to death. Here's another pollution. And this is a topic today is the killing of your children is a pollution of the land. It needs to stop. Whether in the womb or outside the womb, the parents were killing their children and God says that is a pollution. The government says it's legal. Well, the hell with the government and let's get right with the Bible. Again, a Christian nation says it's legal to kill children. A great revival in America when the nation says it's okay to kill children. And God says when you kill your children, that's a polluted. And notice how idols shows up in the context. Quite interesting. So Isaiah 48.11. Isaiah 48.11. I hope we can get all these done. Isaiah 48, 11. For my own sake, God speaking, even to my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my gl glory unto another. Okay? How about taking the name of Jesus Christ in vain? That pollutes God's name. Oh, and Jake. Polluting God's name. You do it. You need to repent. Just using Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's polluting God's name. Oh God. That's polluting God's name. And we've gone far from the forest and gone far from the oceans and far of the land. We're right in the realms of God the Father. And when you pollute God's name, it is worse than throwing straws into the ocean. That's one of the commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord, the Lord God's name in vain. Jeremiah 3.11. Jeremiah 3.11. Let's look at what pollution is. Jeremiah uh, uh, 3.1. Jeremiah 3.1. They say if a man put away his wife, if she go from him and become another man, shall he return unto her again? That's against the law of the Jews. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot, that's an interesting word, with many lovers. Yet return again unto me, saith the Lord. It was a violation of the law for a woman to divorce a man, marry another man, get divorced and go back to her original husband. That was against the law. The Jewish law found in the book of Moses. Well, the context is they're violating the law of Moses, the Jewish people. And for the Jewish people to violate the law, they are in pollution. I'll tell you where they're in pollution today of violating the law. They don't go to Jerusalem at the, at the time of Passover. They don't burn their sacrifices 
upon the brazen altar in Jerusalem. They can't. Because they outright rejected the Messiah. So everything that the Jewish person does today that has been accomplished through Jesus Christ and in the absence of Jesus Christ it's a pollution. Kind of interesting. Verse 2. Lift up your lift up thy eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been laid with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Land of Israel has been polluted. Jeremiah is right in the time just before we did uh, Second Chronicles thirty six. The land of Israel, as I said, Jeremiah speaks about the Queen of Heaven, speaks about the, the, the Christmas tree, speaks about on every corner there was an altar. And everywhere on their houses they were going to the host of heaven. They were looking to their astronomical chart. They were go going into the paper and reading their horoscopes everywhere. And according to Jeremiah, according to the Bible, that is all pollution. Because you're not worshiping God correctly. That's a pollution. Jeremiah 7.30 America has a far more pollution act. And it's not done to the land, it's not done to the waters, it's not done to anything but the worship of God the Father. Jeremiah 7.30 but the children of Judah had done evil in my sight. God speaking. Say, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. The house, the temple of the Lord that built by Solomon was destroyed because they polluted it. With the worship of God and goddesses and not God. Plain and simple. Lamentations 2 2. Lamentations 2 2. <clears throat> the Lord has swallowed up the inhabitants of Jacob and has not pitied. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has polluted the kingdom, the princes there. Guess who's doing the pollution there? God. Remember that King Josiah? He's polluting the false worship, the false gods. God is saying, I am polluting you because you've got false gods. You've got false religion. Lamentations of Jeremiah is after the fall of the Jew Jerusalem. After the fall of Judah. And God says, that fall, that destruction is me polluting you because you would not worship me. How's that for a pollution? How about God doing the pollution? Because you won't worship him as God. And when you talk in the realms of pollution, you're talking about Mother Earth. You're polluting by having Mother Earth. You are polluting when you're trying to have the salvation for animals. Not the salvation of man by the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Ezekiel 4.14 Ezekiel 4.14 Ezekiel 4.14 <clears throat> Then said I, O oh Lord God, that's Jeremiah, no Ezekiel, excuse me. Behold, my soul has not been polluted, for from my youth up even to now I have not eaten that which dieth itself, for of torn in pieces. Neither came their abominable flesh into my mouth. You know what Ezekiel says? We've already talked about it. Ezekiel kept the law. And when God says, hey, I want you to do something, God, that I've been clean to the law. I've been obedient to the law. And for a Jewish person, the law unto Jesus Christ is that is to be that of all the worship. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. 
So see how these verses run over and over and compile with each other together. That's Ezekiel 4.14. Ezekiel 14.11. Fourteen eleven, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions. So what's the pollution there? Sin. Sin is a pollution. It separates you from God. God says, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." All has sin come short in the glory of God, thus we are polluted before God. What makes me clean in, 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 the, in the eyes of God? Jesus Christ, the righteous. He has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God, that, I may have the, that, that he may make me the righteousness of God in him. Without Jesus Christ, I'm polluted. Without Jesus Christ, you're polluted. You can't make God clean by your sins. Your sins have polluted you. 20 verse 13. Ezekiel 20 13. Ezekiel 20 13. But the house of Israel rebelled against me, God, in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes. They despised my judgment, which if a man do, he shall live in them. And my Sabbath, my Sabbath, that's Jewish, they greatly polluted. Well, how did they pollute the Sabbath? They didn't do them. The Jewish people disobeyed God. Of what he has written, what he's spoken to them to do. They didn't do it. That was a pollution. When God told Adam not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he ate of that fruit. He polluted himself. The first pollution is in Genesis 2. When God disobeyed. I mean when man, excuse me, disobeyed God. Israel as a nation under Ezekiel and under Jeremiah. They disobeyed God. That's a pollution. When you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you are polluting yourself in front of God. 20, 13, 20, 30. Wherefore say to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your father? Commit ye whoredom? Oh, that word's come up again. Whoredom and their abominations. Now, whoredom is not just a sexual sin. Is They have also sold themselves to the nation, sold themselves to gods and goddesses. They worship anything but God the Father. Abomination. Again, that's the pollution. When a man separates himself from God, that's the pollution. 31. And will ye offer your gifts when ye make your sons to pass through the fire? They're killing your children again. Ye pollute yourselves with your idols. So you go into a church and they got statues and they got beads and they got icons. And they call it the aids of worship. That church is polluting you before God. Commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any images to worship and bow down before them. And you exactly do that in some churches. When you bow down before that statue, whatever it is, whoever it is, when you worship that icon, you are polluted before God. It's that simple. That's what the scriptures say. 39. Verse 39. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith Lord God, go ye, serve ye every one his idols, and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, you will not listen to God, but pollute ye my holy name no more 
with your gifts and with your idols. They're doing their idolatry, they're doing their religion in the name of God, in the name of Jesus. And all they're doing is polluting the name. Again, they are not honoring the name of God. And then when you go witnessing to people and they bring up church's history, did not the church go out and start the wars? That church did, not the church of Jesus Christ. Well, didn't that pastor go wrong? Yeah, you're polluting the name of God they are. There are people in the name and doing in the name of God that are not doing right or are sinning and they give the name of God a pollution. It's dime a dozen plus shipping and handling. It's sorry that happens, but it happens. Twenty three seventeen. Twenty three seventeen. Twenty three seventeen. We've got a lot. Twenty three seventeen. The Babylonians came to her in a bed of love. And they defiled her with their whoredom. There's that word again. And she was polluted with them. And her mind was alienated from them. Again, it's the heathen worship. And the churches are bringing the heathen worship and the churches are being polluted. It's plain and simple. Verse 30. I, God, will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a-whoring, there's that word again, after the heathen, there it is again, and because thou art polluted with their idols, there it is again. How can you say aids to worship and look at the pollution of the idolatry? Spell out to you in simple form. Idolatry is worse than plastic bags. Idolatry will separate, pollute you from the holy and righteous God. How's that? That's the biblical truth. 23, uh, Ezekiel 36, 18. Ezekiel 36, 18. I gotta, write, I gotta learn how to write clearly. Wherefore, I, God, peered out my fury, anger upon them for the blood that they shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they have polluted it. There's the shedding of blood, murder, there's idolatry. Can I mention one word? Inquisition. Can I mention a book title that you should read? Fox's Book of Martyrs. Another book, Martyrs Mirror. Great books that read about a certain organization that matches this verse here that are polluted from God. The Antichrist is going to be polluted from God because he's going to shed, he's going to, he's going to uh, uh, behead Revelation. And he's going to cause an idol to be worshipped in a number. Quite interesting. 39.7 Ezekiel 39.7 So will I, God, make my holy name, how many times you see name, known in the midst of my people, Jewish people, Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name no more. Somebody's out there destroying the name of God. Somebody is doing ill, they're sinning against God's name. And that's one of, that's one of the Ten Commandments. When you GD something, you're polluting yourself. When you Jesus Christ as a curse, you're polluting yourself. That's what the Bible says, plain and simple. 44 7. Ezekiel 44 7. In that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers. They weren't allowed there. Uncircumcised in heart and circumcised in flesh to be my to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it. There's there's the heathen again. 
and into my house when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, they that broke in my covenant because of all your abomination. What's that? Everybody and everybody's is being welcomed into the church house. And they may have a sign outside the temple, all are welcome. And God says that's an abomination. That is pollution. What are you going to do in 2019 when churches say all are welcome? God says it's a pollution. Why not just read the scriptures to you? Daniel 11.3 Daniel 11.3 Daniel 11.3 And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and will do according to his will. Daniel 11.31 Excuse me. Daniel 11.31 I apologize. The arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. Jesus spoke about that. Three and a half years into the tribulation period, into the great tribulation period, the Antichrist is going to pollute that temple. He's going to defile that temple with what? An idol. The 666. And the beheading of people that won't take the mark of the beast. You're going to worship the great aid to worship. <laughs> the, the idol, the golden idol. Or you're going to be killed. Amos 7.17 Amos 7.17 Amos 7.17 Amos 7.17 Therefore thus saith the Lord the lo Thus saith the Lord The wife shall be an harlot in the city And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword And the land shall be divided by line And thou shalt die in a polluted land The land is polluted because they have not worshipped, they have not served their God. Zephaniah 3. Zephaniah 3. When you don't worship God, you are polluting yourself. Woe to her, Zephaniah 3, 1. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted. To the oppressing city. She obeyed not my, the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near. She drew not near to her God. Got it? God that has been taken out of a city of a country is a city that is polluted. America is being polluted today by taking God and the Word and Jesus out. You notice that they're taking the Ten Commandments out. And how many times have we referenced ourselves to thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain, thou shalt not make any images, idols to worship them. That's why they're taking the commandments out, because they don't want God, and thus the land is being polluted. And I'm not talking about straws, I'm not talking about automobiles, I'm talking about your relationship with God. No relationship, improper relationship with God, you're polluted. You're polluted. 3, 4. Chapter 3, verse 4. Her prophets are light and treacherous person. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary and have done violence to the law. Whatever God's told them to do, they're doing opposite. Whatever God says is right, they're calling evil. Whatever God says is evil, they're calling it good. That is the state of the churches today throughout the world in 2019. Polluted. Polluted. But the devil will have the eyes off serving God to serving animals and serving trees and serving Mother Earth. 
devil says, save those things, but don't save your soul. Don't get right with God. Pollution will kill you. And pollution will send you off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Because pollution is, you do not have a right relationship with God. Malachi 1.7 Malachi 1.7 He had polluted bread. That's the bread that went under on the table. Upon my altar. He said, where have we polluted? In that ye say the table of the Lord is contemptible, worthless. Your service to God, your service to Jesus, uh, you got to do it again. It's Sunday, got to go to church again. Oh, the church wants his money. That's all the church wants. That's a pollution. That's a polluted attitude to have toward God. And it's not right. Verse 12, same chapter. But you have proclaimed it, in that you say the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, God's meat, is corruptible. All the churches are bad. All the Christians are at fault. Oh, I don't go to church because the heathen are there. I'm a heathen? I don't go to church because, you know, there are hypocrites in the church. Your mouth, your testimony. You're polluted. Not all hypocrites are in the church. You're not there. Uh, verse 12, we did that one. Acts 15.20 Acts 15.20 Acts 15.20 but that ye write unto them that they abstain from pollutions from uh, pollutions of idols, from fornication, from things strangled, and from blood. The New Testament church council that got together said no idolatry, it is pollution, no shedding of blood, that is pollution. No fornication, that's pollution. When you eat meat, you make sure all the blood is taken out of it. No eating of blood. Them are pollutions of the New Testament Church Council set for from this point of Acts to the day that the rapture happens. There's idolatry in the churches. Christian, Bible believe in churches. Sometimes the pastors worship. I got my favorite pass. I got my favorite person I listen. I got my favorite group of people I like to hear to stay. I got my favorite CD. That's pollution. Twenty-one twenty-eight. Acts twenty-one twenty-eight. Acts twenty-one twenty-eight. Acts twenty-one twenty-eight. Cry out, men of Israel. Uh-oh, that's what we've been talking about. Old Testament. Help! This is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place, the temple. And further brought Greeks into the temple and have polluted this holy place. Now that's a full charge upon Paul, the Apostle Paul. They're saying, Paul has brought the Gentiles in. Paul has brought the uncircumcised in heart. Paul has brought the uncircumcised in flesh. He, and he did not do such thing. But did we not read that in the Old Testament that was one of the pollutions of Israel? They're hypocrites. Because that's what their fathers were doing. Second Peter 2 Peter 2.20 Second Peter 2.20 For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, uh oh, the world has pollution, through the knowledge of the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse than the beginning. The world has pollutions for the Christian. And we are not to be entangled with them. And yet Christians today are entangled with the pollutions of the world. 
worship, music, whatever it is, dress, entertainment. We're not to be. But the problem is, many are. Many are not, but many are. All right, let's put a hamper on this. Two, three more verses and we're done. 2 Peter 3.10 2 Peter 3.10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth, mother earth, 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 also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing that ye all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye be in all holy conversations and godliness? Peter says that your mother earth, you can't save her. This earth, the moon, the sun, and everything that is to be here, that can be seen and not seen with telescopes, and microscopes, and glasses, it's all going to burn up one day. God will take care of the straws and God will take care of the plastic bags and God will take care of the trees and God will take care of the pollutants and God will take care of the bad air. He'll burn it all up. There it is. Revelation 20 verse 11. Revelation 20 verse 11. You are not going to save Mother Earth. Mother Earth is a goddess, and that pollutes you from God. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, Jesus, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. You know what the earth and the heavens do when Jesus shows up? Out of here. Bye. Can't be there. Can't do that. I'm too wicked in the eyes of God. I'm out of here. And Peter says with it, I'm out of here. It's going to burn up. One last place, Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. Uh, God's going to make it all new. God's going to redo what man has made a mess. Yes. Straws and plastic and nuclear and carbon monoxide and all that. Yes. That's a pollution of the earth and pollution of the world. But there is a pollution of you against God for not serving God and not doing right by God. And God will take care of the pollutions of the earth and the heavens by destroying it all. And God will take care of the pollutions of man by casting you off into the lake of fire that burneth forever. And yet, the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Being burnt, being cast into hell, going to the lake of fire, going to the new heaven, going to the new Jerusalem, to be forever settled with your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, because you have believed on God, you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved through the finished work of the blood of Jesus Christ, and have repented of your sins. And your name will be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Or you can abstain from what God says to do and you can be a polluted standing before God as he casts you off. Lord, didn't I do good works? Lord, didn't I do this? Lord, didn't I do that? Lord, didn't we do it in your name? And Jesus will say to them, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Don't matter how many whales you save. Don't matter how many straws and cans you pick up on the beach. Is what 
have you done with the name and the testimony and the merit of Jesus Christ? What have you done with the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures? Reject it and you are a polluted before God.